So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak tree which was near Shechem. Verse 5, as they journeyed, there was a great terror upon the cities which were around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. He and all the people who were with him, verse 7, he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because their God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. I want to lift really quickly verse 3 again. He says, Let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have gone. Amen. If I were to put a title on the message today, I would title this message, Blessed for the Purpose. Amen. He was broken for the blessing, and then he was blessed for the purpose. I need you to stay with me this morning now. God, many times we know this, God often works through people as his extensions in the earth. Amen? Amen. Here Jacob, Jacob had established himself in Shechem. He, he bought a piece of land and he, he set up shop and he built an altar there. But what, what Jacob didn't understand was that God's purposes were greater than what Jacob had planned for himself. Amen. Amen. There are times when we can be pushed into God's purpose. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? There are times when, when things get so critical, amen, that, that's, that, that, that we don't have a choice but to understand what God is doing at that particular moment in our lives. Amen. A lot of times our, God's purpose for our lives is not realized until there's some type of crisis that brings it to the surface. Amen. Jacob had already encountered Esau. Jacob had set up shop. Jacob was ready to chill and get on with the rest of his life. He was in his last years and he was doing well in Shechem until his daughter was sexually assaulted. Listen now. After that happened, this event led to a whole lot of other things that culminated in, in, in Jacob's sons killing the man and his father who sexually assaulted his daughter. Amen. So now Jacob found himself in another stressful position, just like he was when he was running from Esau. He felt like the ones that were surrounding him were going to come and take his life. Amen. He told his sons, he told his sons, you have made me stink to my neighbors. But this time Jacob didn't have to bargain. This time Jacob didn't have to come up with a scheme because the Lord sent a word to Jacob. And in verse 1, the Lord sent a word to Jacob and says, Arise and go up to Bethel. See, it, it was in this crucible, in this hard situation, that the purpose of God became clear to Jacob. And Jacob's role in God's purpose also came to the surface. I need you to see this now. God sends Jacob back to Bethel, or Bethel, amen, which is the place where God first showed himself to Jacob. Y'all stay with me now. Don't jump off the boat now. Stay with me. Listen, listen. This is the place where God changed Jacob's name. It was the place, amen, where that name change was the first step in Jacob becoming who God really called him to be. And God was preparing Jacob to be a part of his purpose. Listen, verse 1. Then God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and live there. Make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Amen. Amen. Listen, now our place in God's purpose is realized, you see this now, when God intervenes his plan with our lives. That's, that's why sometimes it's uncomfortable to live out what God has for us to do because his plan will intersect our lives and disrupt, amen, what we're doing. Amen. And so, when we think about this, God first met Jacob in Genesis 28. He came down and he talked to him and he showed him a ladder reaching from heaven to earth. Listen now, that ladder uh, is not like the Tower of Babel where man was trying to get to God. God was telling Jacob through this ladder that the Almighty God wanted to interact with his people. Amen. Can I help you this morning? You are part of the purpose of God. 
Amen. You ask yourself, well, why am I still here? Why am I not dead yet? How, how did I survive this? You're part of the purpose of God. If you're a child of God, you need to know that God has intersected his plan with your life. Amen. And a lot of times that's not comfortable, but it's always victorious when God does that. So I asked myself as I was reading the text, why did God choose Jacob? Why the heel grabber? Why the deceiver? Well, first of all, God made a promise to Abraham and to Isaac that will be fulfilled through Jacob. Amen. Second of all, Jacob's 12 sons represented the future of what God was getting ready to do. Do I have a witness? Listen now. It, it, was, it will be through this little nation that God was building up that God would drown pharaohs and open the Red Sea. It will be through this little nation that God will slay the Nephilim and the giants in the promised land. It would be through this little nation that God will put one rock in a slingshot and prove to the lion that he has no equal. God had big plans for Israel and for Jacob, and Jacob was the conduit through which these plans were going to be realized. I need you to see this now. In this encounter in the 35th chapter of Genesis, I need you to see this now. That there's God's role in, 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 in bringing us into his purpose. And it's our role in preparing ourselves for his purpose. Amen. I need you to see this. It's twofold now. So what is, what is our role in God's purpose? Help me, Lord. Help me to, to preach this thing like you showed it to me. What is our role in God's purpose? Number one, we have to prepare to be a part of God's purpose. Look at verse two. Here's Jacob, the man of the house now. So Jacob said to his household and all who were there with him, put away the foreign gods which are among you, purify yourselves, and change your clothes. See, at this point in Jacob's life, Jacob understood that there was something going on and that God's hand was heavy on him. Amen. You ever had one of those moments in your life where you finally realize that the Lord has his hand on you and he's moving you to something that you don't even understand? Amen. Notice how Jacob responds to God's directive. He instructs his household to do three things. He says, number one, put away foreign gods. You can't take baggage to the place where God has taken us. Amen. Amen. You can't, you can't bring all of this extra stuff where God has taken us. I need to help you see this now. Rachel, which is one of Jacob's wives, when, when they fled Laban, Rachel was one of the wives who stole Laban's gods put them in a bag and took them with her. And then when Laban finally caught up with them, listen now, she hid them, she sat on them and said, I can't get up, amen, because it, I, I'm, I'm having some women issues and I can't get up. Amen. The Bible says she hid them in the saddle of, of a camel. And so here it is, she stole the gods. I guess she thought they needed protection. And Jacob had already reminded them that it was God who was with me every step of the way. We don't need those idols. Amen. I need you to see what Jacob did. Now Jacob told everybody in the house, uh, uh, put these gods away. What is Jacob saying? If you're part of God's purpose and you're with me, you got to line up with the purpose too. Amen. Amen. He knew that foreign gods would hinder worship. Amen. We know that God is a jealous God. Am I right about that? We know that God already told us that there's no other God besides him. So why in the world would we put anything in the place of God? Jacob recognizes that these idols will be a stumbling block. So he buried them under an oak tree. I need you to see this, how the author painted this picture now. When Laban came looking for them, and the lady was, was having her women issues, amen, on the 28th day of the month, amen, she sat on the guards, and so they were defiled by that. And then when Deborah died, amen, listen now, Deborah was buried under the same oak tree where Jacob buried those guards. So what is the author telling us? Those guards are nothing. They've been defiled twice, one by blood and the other time by a dead body. So what is God saying to us? They mean absolutely nothing. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 43.10 says, I am he. This is God talking to Isaiah. I am he, and before me there was no God formed, and after me there will be no other. Amen. 
I need to let you know this morning now, if, if we're going to be in God's purpose, we got to put away those foreign gods. Amen. we got to put away those idols that are in our lives that we don't even realize are taking space of where God should be occupied. Amen. Amen. Second, Jacob tells him, he says, you got to purify yourselves. This was a common practice now. They had to go take a bath. I know that sounds silly, doesn't it? But this was a ritual. Whenever you get ready to go into the presence of God, you had to bathe, you had to wash your body, and you had to wash your clothes. Read it in Exodus 19. Listen now. And so they're here. They're going home to Beth El. Beth El, I heard Mr. Ken talk prayer this morning. Beth El means house of God. And so they were going to the house of God. Jacob says, you got to wash yourselves. You got to purify yourselves before you go to the house of God. Listen now, the sons had just murdered somebody. The wives were worshiping idols. And so Jacob says, no, we can't take this with us. Purify yourselves. And even now, if you want to be in the presence of God, we have to purify ourselves. Now listen, don't let me get you messed up now. If you want to be involved in the purposes of God, we have to purify ourselves. Well, Pastor, how do I purify myself? You telling me that I'm saved by works? No. We purify ourselves, amen, by doing what? By being washed in the blood of Jesus. You sang about it this morning. We can't go into the Holy of Holies until the coal has touched our lips, until Jesus has forgiven us of our sins. And so when we want to be in the presence of God and we want to participate, amen, in the purpose of God, first we must be purified. And he says, change your clothes. See, once, once the Lord cleanses you now, don't go back and put on the same dirty clothes that you had on before. Right. I'm preaching to myself now. Don't, don't go put that old dirty shirt on and those dirty underwear and those dirty pants with all the stains on it that everybody can see after God has done a work in our lives. Amen. Amen. Reminded me of a scripture in Zechariah when the high priest was standing before God and Satan was standing there to accuse him. And God says, the first of all, first thing God had to do was shut the devil up. So he said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. And so once the devil shut up, then God told those who were there, go get him some new clothes. Put the festival robes on him. It's party time now because he's come out. I brought him out of the fire. We prepare for God's purpose by understanding, listen now, that we can't be who we were. But we have to be who God called us to be. Is there a witness in the house? See, God changed Jacob's name and his character for a reason. Jesus, amen, changed our names and our identities for a reason. Because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I need you to stay with me now. Listen. So, 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 so what's our role in God's purpose? We've got to prepare. Just like Jacob said, we've got to put away the idols. We've got to wash ourselves. We've got to change our clothes. Secondly, we must be obedient so that we may participate in God's purpose. Amen. Look at verse 3. God told him, Jacob, go to Bethel. Live there. Verse 3. Now let us arise and go to Bethel. You see that? Immediately, Jacob understood what God was saying, and Jacob obeyed the command of God. Amen. He didn't have to scheme his way out of this jam that his sons put him in. Jacob obeyed the command of God. Amen. And the Lord sent him back home to Bethel. Thirdly, we got to remember what God has done. Listen, verse 3b. I'll make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I've gone. Do you know that remembering what God has done energizes us to continue in his purpose? Am I right about that? Do, have you ever thought about a milestone in your life that God brought you over and you look back and just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, that I, that thing didn't take me out. Jacob, remember what God did. I need to let you, I need to help somebody this morning. You got to remember what God has done so that what God has taken us won't seem so hard. Amen. 